So this past week I opened up about my eating disorder and I came out about it on this channel. I didn't think I was ready for it, I still don't know if I'm ready for it, but I kind of want to stay on this track where I'm bringing awareness to mental health, anxiety, and depression. I feel like it's not talked about, I feel like there's bad stigmas, and I feel like I have some kind of responsibility to keep this talk going now that we started it on my channel. I want to continue this path of storytelling, keeping it real and raw, and bringing awareness. With that being said, I decided to make a series on this channel called The Truth About, where I talk to other YouTubers candidly on camera, super real and raw, about what they're struggling with off camera. I feel like YouTubers have a stigma that their lives are perfect, and we're all humans just like you guys. The point of the series is to completely bring down that wall and bring creators closer to their subscribers while spreading awareness and keeping the conversation going that should be going. I personally reached out to these influencers myself and we're going to be talking about things they struggle with currently off camera. So let's bring the wall down, let's bring awareness, and let's keep the conversation going. Let's go. back to another episode of The Truth About. Today we are going to find the truth about Laura DIY. If you guys don't know who Lauren is, she's highly known in the DIY space on YouTube, hence her name, Laura DIY. She has a boyfriend, Alex Wasabi, who's also another YouTuber in the space. And I was just going through my Instagram and her picture came up and I obviously clicked on it and I was lurking and I was kind of just like looking at her page, seeing like how happy and like perfect everything looked. And that's when I realized I wanted to reach out to her because I want to see what else is going on because nobody's life is perfect. We all post our highlight reels. I texted her, she knows about the series, and I said, hey, I just wanted to know if you wanted to be on the series and if you wanted to be on it, what would you want to talk about? And she told me that she wanted to talk about the pressures of having a public relationship. Now, as much as that surprised me, it also didn't. Being a YouTuber is like super stressful. I always talk about it in the series. And I'm kind of intrigued and excited to talk about it because this is a topic we've never talked about on my channel, relationships. And, you know, I have a boyfriend. I'm dating Nate. You guys know Nate. And I deal with a lot of pressures just off camera. So I can't imagine, like, dating someone that's also a YouTuber and having an image together and dealing with that pressure on top of, like, your own career and your own life. I'm really excited. So without further ado, let's go to Lauren's house. She just Instagrammed. I DIY'd this purse with my own mother freaking craft line because Lara DIY craft line hit in all major craft stores this summer. I love you. What? This be launching a craft line this summer? Yes, girl supporting girls. Oh my hey. god. <laughs> oh my god. What's up? my first time visiting I know and you are the DIY queen because like your place is like the lifestyle heaven it's like it's coming together we'll get there get it's there. so cute guys like I literally like guessed her theme of her house <laughs> and I guess like boho means like mid Palm Springs mid-century yeah. like 70s a yeah. little bit. it's perfect but anyways I texted you like two weeks ago mm -hmm about wanting to talk to you for this. I feel like, I think it's really cool, like, like the whole series has been so fun to watch. Well, you know what, it's it's different because I feel like we get to talk to YouTubers in the way that like we're talking right now, but the viewers don't. So I think it's a really cool and unique take on like what people are going through or like specific topics that people feel that they're more of like an expert or like feel that they've experienced a lot. I feel like that's really interesting that you did say that. I didn't realize that's what I was doing, but it like, totally <laughs> is. Because yeah. I realized when we talk, we're always like talking to a camera. Yeah. And automatically when you hold out a camera, like it's ingrained in us to go, hey guys, like we're happy. Yeah. Like we're saying that in our tone. Yeah. It's like, hey guys, so today I'm doing this. It's like your voice goes up like an yeah. octave. Yeah, it's so true. And like I feel like, especially in the vlogs too, because Alex is a daily vlogger, so people see so many different sides of me as a person in daily vlogs because it's like when you're tired, when you look your best, when you look your worst and it's so funny seeing the different levels of like your voice excitement in your own vlog versus someone else's vlog versus a video like this versus like a regular DIY video that I would do it's so different it's like you're the same person but your excitement level is just 
you know, it varies. Totally. We've been doing this how long? Like me, like five, six years. Five, six years, yeah. You know, six years having a habit is like really hard to break. Totally. It's for some reason, I, you know, I, this is like my fourth or fifth time doing one of these episodes. Mm -hmm. And like everyone has touched on that like we feel like we always have to be that way. No, it's so true. Well, especially to like when you do like a main channel video, people have expectations of like what they think you're gonna be like and what you're gonna sound like and your energy. And obviously like you want your main video to be seven minutes of just happy and a positive experience and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Where these videos, especially, I've really gotten into like longer vlogs and longer videos and I feel like there's less pressure to be so like, hey guys, like, you what's can't up? Do it the whole time. Cause you would literally die if you had to be like that for 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah. no, seriously. And I'm excited that like you touched on that you want to talk about like the pressures of like having a public relationship. Yeah. Because I mean, I'm friends with you, but I also see it from like a viewer and a friend that's yeah. a YouTuber. No, totally. So it's like, I feel like I want to use like my platform to like show mm -hmm that like it that's not always how it is you know everyone sees the highlights yeah no it, it, that's exactly what it is mm -hmm. and i feel like viewers are a lot more understanding now than they were maybe four years ago yeah. you know when vlogging really started to get popular people really thought that they knew everything about your life and that so wasn't the case and i feel like vloggers especially people who do daily have really in, like helped share that it's only 10 minutes of an edited down day you know like picking and choosing which parts they want people to see so i think it's gotten a lot better but definitely like you'll never be able to explain to someone like you don't fully understand we do have pressure just from our own careers and like our own channels and videos so to add your relationship to that list of pressures when it's like the most personal amazing thing anyone could ever experience mm -hmm. having to deal with pressure on all aspects on top of trying to make people happy it's a lot yeah i know for sure and i think too like the biggest thing is that people learn how to manage their assumptions and that's what like daily vloggers that i was just like referring to i feel like have helped viewers learn is managing assumptions because it, it goes both ways it's like one of the biggest things that alex and i get is when are you getting engaged when are you having kids when are you getting married when are you moving in together and so people obviously that's entertaining for them to see us you know being able to vlog in the same house and moving in vlogs like i love watching those too but at the same time it's like that puts a small little seed in your head being like should we be moving in together like should we be engaged now like how old am i am i am i on track and like it's not healthy you know to kind of feel like there's a little bit of control coming from a random outside source and i think the other thing too is that so there's like that side where people are really in support of your relationship and obviously when they say that like i know that it's all because like they love us together and they want to see us happy but then there's, there's also like the side where if alex and i have a really busy week and he's vlogging and I'm not in his vlogs that week, people think that like we're fighting and we're about to break up or if we're not sharing pictures on social media but we're just hanging out at home, people think that like there's something so terribly wrong. For example, my personal trainer is male and anytime you do a video with someone that is of the opposite sex, you know what I mean, for me being straight, mm -hmm. they ship you and they think like, oh, like they're flirting, like the vibes here, I ship this, like Lauren cheating on Alex, da 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 da, da stuff like that and it's just, it's so crazy to see. It's like having your relationship, uh, your relationship treated like it's not real. And Alex and I have done a really good job of learning, you know, what stays public, what stays private. And um, he only posts five days a week now. So it's also nice having that. And it's also too, we've learned that, you know, you don't need to record every single thing all day. Cause your video at the end of the day is only 10 minutes ish mm -hmm. long. And you know, if we do five fun things during the day, it's like maybe you only vlog three of them and two of them can be off camera. It's so. like interesting that you touched on the two types of pressures that you get. Mm -hmm. I didn't even, like that's news to me. It's so, like the pressures of people trying to break you up and the pressures of people trying to move you in like a positive forward direction. Like have babies now. Yeah, have babies <laughs> now, exactly. Oh my God. Yeah. Like and I feel like your 20s are just hard in general. Like yeah. being the age we are and documenting it. Alex and I have done a really good job of like in a business sense of having separate channels. I think we're really lucky. Yeah. Because I think it's really hard and like obviously I can't speak from experience but people who share a channel and at the end of the day share a business, you know? It's like the editing, the accounting behind it, you know, managing people that you might hire to help you and your team. It's like I can't imagine having to handle and manage a relationship on top of the business end of things. So we're really lucky in the sense that we have totally different businesses. Yeah. In terms of, you know, like sometimes obviously we do things together, but for the most part, it's Alex Wasabi and Laura DIY stuff. They're separate. 
That's so smart. Yeah. Because, you know, coming from like a duo channel, like it ain't easy. You guys do have it set up really cool. Yeah. So like, how did you guys, like tell me like how you guys like met. Start from your last relationship. Last we had a heart to heart was like, Three summers ago. Yeah, literally, like, I remember. I love yes, yes. <laughs> So like, catch yeah. me up. This is my fourth relationship, and the first three obviously were like dating people who weren't in like the influencer social media realm of the world. And Alex is obviously the first person I've dated that's a YouTuber. So Alex and I met just over three and a half years ago in person. Surprisingly, like no oh. one was like sliding into DMs or anything. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Like slide into those DMs, <laughs> but like we met in person at um, a YouTube event in New York. And so I was still with my ex at the time, and we'd been together for just over four years, but we were kind of on the rocks, like things weren't going well, and like we ended on super good terms. So we like still talk now, we're still friendly, like the most ideal breakup that I could have ever gone through. So after that, we didn't start dating until maybe like eight months later. Did you just click? Like you were like- Well, when we met, so it was me, Alex, and Fuzi. We all met at the same time, and we became like super, super close friends. When I came to LA for a week after we met, we ended up hanging out every day, and we had all just met each other. So it wasn't like anyone was like closer than the other people in the group, because I know it's always like weird, especially in a group of three. And then I went back to Toronto, because I was still living in Toronto at the time. And yeah, we just became a really close friend group, and then Alex and I obviously got to know each other. And after I, you know, been single and moved on from the breakup and stuff, and it was like ready to like get back out on the playing field. Um, Alex is there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys have like, it, it's almost like you fell into it, like not knowing what you could create together. Yeah, for sure. Cause it's not like when I met him, I was like, oh, you're my next mate. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. like we met and I was like, oh, like we're really similar. And that's how, that's like why we started being such good friends at the beginning. You guys like are really, like, really good. Yeah, honestly, like we definitely had to work through the daily vlogging because that's really hard. And at the beginning, because I posted such like scheduled produced content where I wasn't, you know what I mean? It was, the focus was DIY. It was, the focus was never my life and my relationship and stuff like that. So for me, it being not my content, like obviously I still had control over it. Cause I was like, no, I don't want that in the vlog. I don't want you to show that. We always kind of butted heads over I was getting in the way of his creative freedom and I felt like my relationship was being made a reality show. You know what I mean? And that was like kind of the very beginning of it when we learned how to handle the daily vlogging thing and how to find balance. And it was definitely something that took a while. It was a major learning curve because he was so passionate because he had just started daily vlogging. And when we were friends, like obviously I was so supportive and I loved it and it was so cool and I'm so proud of like how fast his channel was growing. But as soon as I felt like my relationship was being judged and broadcasted, I kind of reeled back and I was like, I don't know if I can do this. Like this is, I'm a pretty private person and like I focus on DIY. Like you seem very like confident and secure. You seem like you're in a very good spot with mm -hmm. everything right now. Yeah. But was there ever a time where like a comment, like maybe in the beginning of your relationship mm -hmm. where you were like, deep down it would get to you and it would make you start questioning things. Yeah, of course. It's a thing, right? Yeah. It's like if I have like a freaking eyelash in my eye, they'll be like, oh, she rolled her eye or she's winking at some other guy off camera. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's so crazy that people read into things so deeply when it's, there's nothing actually there. And it's just, you know, it's just people wanting to make drama where there's not, cause that's what's always gonna happen. Drama, people love drama. Yeah, people love drama. And it's, it's just like so crazy. So, I mean, we've never had issues where we've fought about something that a fan brought up, luckily. Just because, I mean, Alex's channel is pretty PG too. His, his audience is pretty young. But there's definitely times where we watch the vlog back and be like, we shouldn't put this in because people will say X, Y, Z. And it's something that you just always have to be, you know, so aware of and think about before you put something public. I think the whole positivity movement has been so good for the internet. You know what I mean? Like people trying to like really enforce positivity. But there's definitely comments that people say about how someone is acting. Like just for example, like just say I'm, PMSing or not feeling good and I'm like more quiet in the background of a vlog people will take that and try and turn into something that it's not and Then I feel bad because I'm like, oh, I really was you know Not really participating and like maybe I like brought Alex's day down that day because I wasn't feeling good And you know you just like go into overthinking mode because I'm such I feel like we're both overthinkers like to the hardcore <laughs> From one overthinker to another like I yeah. was so curious, but I can't imagine like the level that like 
you're on. Daily vlogging is a lot. Like it definitely is, like I feel like there's tiers of it. So there's Instagram, which is, people have kind of accepted that Instagram is edited and very posed and stuff and they just like pretty pictures. And I think that's totally fine because it's mm -hmm. photography, it's an art form, whatever. And so there's Instagram and I feel like everyone's really pretty supportive on Instagram of relationship stuff for the most part. And then there's like challenge videos that couples do and people always like those because they're more entertainment. But then once you get into vlogs, people get a glimpse into your life and they see, you know, what your relationship is more like it's more on candid. camera, but it's like candid, candid. and more raw and real, and especially structured. with like family vloggers now and relationships and couples channels. Like people love that it's a real reality show because reality TV isn't actually real where a YouTuber's vlog channel is it's real. Is real. It's, it's like sad because if you were to have a couple's vlog channel, you're not, and that's your main job, like you literally wouldn't get views off of old YouTube titles being like, we went grocery shopping or day at the beach. And so it's like really sad now that especially couples have decided that they need to clickbait their titles to get views, to get paid because it's your job and it's because it's your income. But you know, some people use their relationship as like we broke up. Yeah, Thumbnail. yeah. Oh my god. And like Alex and I have totally done that because it's like that's you just have to play the game. And we're lucky that we both have like a good head on our shoulders and our fans know like for the most part what we're really like. And so when they see something like that, they're like, oh, they didn't actually break up. It's just like, you know, it's entertainment, it's a joke. Love that you touched on the YouTube game. Because I'll be honest, I've clickbaited. I hate when I see comments that are like, really, like, was that clickbait necessary? Mm. And like in my head, I'm like, kind it of. It was. That's like, like, and it sucks because it's like you could have the most amazing, like, high quality content. It's the exact same of as headlines of a magazine. And magazines have been doing it forever. It's all technically clickbait for you to be enticed. And it's just like crazy that YouTube turned into that because that's not how it started. So you have had four relationships mm -hmm. worth the three of them non-YouTube relationships. Non-YouTube relationships. And so one of those three was obviously on camera because I'd started doing YouTube. And so I feel like I learned a lot about like what I, not like need or like vibe, but like what best suits my lifestyle. You know what I mean? With someone who does the same thing. Cause there's definitely pros and cons to dating someone who does exactly what you do. Like obviously there's a deeper understanding of needing to be on your phone and taking photos and documenting everything. And you know, meetings and having a really weird schedule. Cause we don't, we like work the opposite of a nine to five. It's just like, you're always working, but in like weird increments. Also was nice when I was not dating a YouTuber to have kind of that escape of not being, not like locked into the digital world, but being, I guess, thinking about it all the time. Like it was a nice off switch. And so obviously with Alex, it's so great because we can travel together. You know, our work is very similar. So we're doing the same things. We're talking about the same content. We know the same people. We can go to the same events together, but it's, it's something where you, again, have to find the balance of turning off and going offline and finding time for yourself and to do normal things that aren't on the vlog, that aren't on, you know, an Insta story or an Instagram. I like that you touched on the on-off switch. Yeah, I mean, I think it's so important. My question is, since you are dating a YouTuber, like, mm -hmm. I've never dated a YouTuber. Do you find it easier dating a YouTuber, like, because he understands you on another level? Yeah, you know what, and I think I was really lucky because I, when Baz and I were dating, when, like, we dated for a long time before I started YouTube. So he kind of got to grow with me, where I think it'd be really hard to start dating someone now that, has not been a part of the whole thing. They just got thrown into this world. I think it would be so crazy to date someone who doesn't understand. I can't speak to experience from that because Baz was with me the entire way that my channel was growing. So he kind of got to see the evolution of, you know, having one hater to having 50,000 people commenting things to having a million people commenting things. So I was really lucky in the sense that he grew with me. So he always had an understanding, but I think Alex, just to a different degree because he lives it every single day personally, definitely has a really thorough grasp on, you know, like what can really get to someone and what doesn't. He obviously like understands the feeling of disappointment when like a video that you worked really hard on doesn't do well. It's crushing. But like, it's literally soul crushing. crushing. Literally soul crushing. And I feel like Alex also understands that feeling. But I also think that like just as a person, him being a YouTuber or not, we just react to things so differently that like, he, if he were to not be a YouTuber, he fully would not understand because he's so unaffected by things. Yeah. In the same way that I am like so affected by things. I also like, so it works in your favor. 
Yeah, for sure. But that's, that's good. Like, obviously, it's a good balance. Track. It's a good balance I mean, for sure. I have the same thing. I could never date myself. Oh, I would that's what I die. always say. I would literally die. We would kill each other. We'd be just like one big ball of stress. Like, do you, you want to know something? I walked in here thinking that you were going to say that you guys are the same person. No, not at all. We're complete opposites. Complete I mean, I don't know opposites. Alex that well. I think, like, yeah. the last time I saw him was at Remy's yacht party. Yeah. <laughs> <But> <laughs> Every time I see Alex, he's like super friendly and just like really good vibes. I've always loved you guys together, but like I get the same vibes from you. Mm. But I feel like now that you say it, I really see it. We talked about like your career and being a YouTuber in general and how that's stressful. And then on top of that, the pressure of having a public relationship with another YouTuber. Mm. So you have those two things going on, but like what is like the one thing that is makes this all worthwhile. I think at the end of the day, we're both just so lucky to be doing something that we love and we get to experience it together. There's this like really cute, cheesy clip when Alex was single before we met and he like decided that he didn't want to be alone anymore where he's like, I just like, I have all these cool things but I have no one to share it with. And it's so cute. That's exactly what it is, is that like we're so lucky we get to experience all of these cool things and like do meet and greets and meet fans, make videos and do fun content for our viewers and we can do it together. And he's like a great person to do it because he's so funny and he's really upbeat. And at the end of the day, like he understands exactly what I'm going through. Like maybe not on the same level because we're not the same person, but that's why we work together is because we're opposites. But I'm, you know, we're both really lucky, I think, to have each other and still be able to have as normal of a relationship as you can, I think, with being in the spotlight. I think, you know, we both don't give each other enough credit for how far we've come as a relationship and as personalities on YouTube that do have parts of a relationship put online. And so, we've, I think, you know, he deserves a favor. Like, both oh. of us do, you know what I mean? Just for, like, doing a good job of not, like, losing yeah. your sanity and not like whoring out your career and your relationship online like I would just it would be so it's so sad when you see relationships kind of go that direction I think we're really lucky that we've done a, an okay job in my opinion of staying sane and being normal and being able to keep our relationship as good as it would be if it wasn't in a vlog or anything like your past self like five years ago when you yeah. started YouTube did you ever think you were gonna like find your person through YouTube and conquer it together? Like oh my have God. all these memories, experiences, like I Coachella, know. like YouTube yeah. Summit, like all these events, like you have like a someone person. that's a person. I know, like, yeah, I have a person, which is so nice. No, I mean, especially like even just like the fact that like I live in the States now is not something that I ever thought would happen. I thought I was gonna live in my hometown for my entire life in Canada. You know what I mean? Like, wow. and so it's like the fact that like a dating an American living across the continent is just like so crazy. Like I never, it's not something that, you know, I ever would have predicted. There's nothing I would change, 100%. So it's all worth it. Yeah, 100%. It's like, there's pros and cons to everything. Yeah, pros, exactly. There's pros and cons to everything. You learn how to work through the cons. It, you just gotta figure out what's worth it and what's not. Yeah, and, and you find the balance. Love is totally worth it. Totally. In my opinion. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Alright, thanks for being Oh my god, yeah, thanks for having me. And your place is so nice. Thanks, it'll be even better and give me six months. I'll come back in six months.